I've just come back from watching Alma put down at the Mill Lane Surgery in West Hampstead. It was one of the most um, powerful and moving things I've, I've, I've seen. Alma seemed to know what was about to happen and she laid her head gently down on her paw and waited for it to happen. She knew, as any, if any animal knew, that death was certain that moment. Alma knew. She was looking at me and she just quietly gave up as though she'd held out waiting for me to arrive there this morning. She died a second later after the injection. She was too ill to live. And of all my cats, she was probably the most difficult to handle. She was incredibly feral. Beautiful, beautiful white cat with a black tail. I kept her scent on my hands so the other cats, when I got back here, could take their leave of her. Which they did, and they understand, without my having to say anything, that Alma will not be coming home again. Before I could do that, another neighbour in this block has lost her mother today. Another neighbour is on a flight and couldn't stay because her ticket was booked and she had commitments and promises to keep in America. What I'm trying to say today is that life goes on. However difficult it is in this building site, for that is what it is. It's a building site outside my home and it's a building site inside my home. There is no area of my flat that is not displaced and I cannot lay my hand on a single object that is familiar and known to me or anything that I need. It grieves me that Alma should see her home like this, dismantled over the last two weeks. The kitchen, which is where she stayed, was all she had and she came back here at night. Barry says that in the two weeks she was with us, she would have got more, she got more attention from us both than she may have done on her own. But certainly she allowed Barry to stroke her, which she never has done before. All this going on with this noise around us. And I asked the workers when I came back because the slab drilling was so bad today in flat 12 above me that I asked the workers could they ask the foreman just just for an hour of peace or at least to be let to be told how long the drilling impossible intense drilling over the master bedroom where we are holed up with the rest of the cats no one came back to me and the drilling went on as though none of this had happened we've had this for 17 weeks and there's no way it's coming to an end it's getting worse it's getting worse by the week the flat behind the flat that was behind me in my protest has been excavated it's been slab drilled the concrete void there was a concrete slab because it was the bottom floor they drilled through that concrete floor there's very little void in which to put lay the pipes and whatever it is they do when they're slab drilled because it is the ground floor. The dust is all over my flat. Everything is covered with dust. I sometimes catch myself unable to breathe. But I think that's because they're cutting the marble or the granite. I can't make out which. It's a terrible time. The rain is falling softly through it all today. And I don't know where to go with the pain. I had to stay strong for Alma and she never guessed what I was feeling. But it's a terrible, terrible day and we shouldn't be living like this. These things happen, we lose our animals and people, our parents die. But 
we should have some space to grieve, and, and there is none. There's no peace to be had. I can't console the other cats. And there's nowhere to go with my sorrow today. Outside, it's a nightmare. It's a complete nightmare outside. This is my back door. There's nothing, absolutely, nothing can be done. We're stuck with this until it ends. And whatever we're going through, whatever thoughts we have about what we want to do with our day, that is all to be put aside. It is all to be put aside. In the, in the interest of, of, of drilling and home improvement and property development, this platform says the only way is the way up. I don't know whether you can see that. The only way is the way up. It feels very much to me, as tenants here, that the only way is the way down. And there's absolutely nothing still that we can do. There's supposed to be an impact assessment. God knows what's happening to that. Being done by the environmental health officer for Westminster and the noise officer, Mr. Wilkins. We've not heard a word about that. The complaint about the noise team, we've not heard a word about that either. But it doesn't matter because both documents will be a complete whitewash and will vindicate the builders and the noise team. And we will have got nothing from this. The dust from this window is going into my flat. We've asked them repeatedly to close it. As you can see, it's open. The place is awash with builders' vehicles. And there's nothing we can do. Absolutely nothing. It's not their fault that Alma has died. It's not anyone's fault. The uremia that she was in caused the ulceration of her guts. And when it finally came to the end game, the damage was done and was irretrievable. And she was three days from death on Saturday morning. If only we had known. If only we had known. But what could have been done? I was nursing her in a building site, the building site that our homes have become. We are completely and absolutely powerless as tenants. We can do nothing at all to alter this situation. When I get up tomorrow morning, it will be to the same noise, the same slab drilling, And there's nothing I can do about this. On the fridge behind me are four ribbons. One for Cathy, who died in November 2011 on Bonfire Night. One for Marla, who died on the 17th of December, four days after the burglary. And one for Lytton. One for Marla, who died on the 19th, 17th of December. Hamlet died between Marla and Lytton in February. And the gold ribbon is for Lytton, who died after 11 weeks of combating infective, infectious peritonitis. It will have been the whole year, 2012, 2013, 
when the builders finally go for good. There won't be anything left of some of our lives. Just the horror, the horror of it all. And the platform that is driven round every morning that terrorises my cats with its motto, the only way is up. And that is the way of this road. The way is up on the Abbey Road. And we are in the way. And I seem to have always been in the way. In the way of everyone. All my life. She was a wonderful, sweet, sweet little cat. With no fur, except on her back and, and, and her head and her tail. But she was still unutterably beautiful. Al, her carer, her constant carer, was totally in love with her. We left him unneutered because we thought he might lose interest in her. The rest of the cats would bully her and I had to protect her. Emily at night spent her nights in the kitchen with, with Alma and she seems to be very, very upset, although they led separate lives here. I hope that no one else has to go through a year like the last one and it's not finished yet like the last year I've had of life on the Abbey Road. <laughs>